Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thanks a million for this opportunity. Guide us by your mighty Holy Spirit to do your will. Thanks, Jesus, for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. Are you glad to be here? This is a beautiful church. Amen. Today, I want to share with you about what I call the key of knowledge. Turn with me to Luke 11, verse 52. The key of knowledge. Luke 11, verse 52. Yeah. Luke 11, verse 52. Luke 11, verse 52. Woe unto you, lawyers. Woe unto you, lawyers. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. For you have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves. Ye entered not in yourselves. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. Amen. God's, hello, God's working with God and walking with God is very, very connected to what you know. Now, I find that people who are ministers live on islands of knowledge. They live on islands of knowledge. Like you live on this island, Mauritius, and you don't know that there is another island called Madagascar. And you live on Madagascar, you don't have any idea of Africa. All right? And you live in Africa, you don't have any idea what's going on in South America, which is another big island. So, on your little island of isolation, you are limited to what is happening and what you can find out on that little Mauritius island or Madagascar island. Madagascar is the next place by God's grace we are going to for crusades. And so when you are on an island, you are surrounded by the ocean and you rarely have contact with others. So it's very difficult to do evangelism on an island. It's difficult to go to an island, do you understand? Because it's protected naturally. There's a natural isolation that takes place. And most pastors live on islands of knowledge. All right? And so they are limited to what they know on their little island. And they praise themselves because they meet fellow islanders. <laughs> they meet fellow islanders. And they congratulate each other on what they are doing. And they compare themselves with themselves and feel they are doing okay. Because the only people they know are the other people on the same island. Wow. How many can relate with what I'm saying? Yeah. You will not know what is happening. And there are, excuse me, many great things taking place. Many islands of knowledge that exist and you once you are in your little world you are cut off from other knowledge now denominations have that tendency to become islands of knowledge countries tend to form islands like going through South Africa I mean, we've been to from Polokwane down to Cape Town to Uppington, to East London, Port Elizabeth, everywhere. In Tata, everywhere, basically, because so many more places. And you can see that South African churches and pastors live on a South African island. Is that not true? And you know what you know 
from your island and you are limited to what you know. So you don't even know that there is another world or there are other worlds out there. And you see, broad-minded people, clever people, you see, there are two types of people. People who live on an island and ask, is there anything beyond? Is there anything beyond? Is there anything beyond the sea? Is the world flat? And they go out, they make boats, and they go and discover. And the people they discover, they call them natives. And they colonize them. And there are those who don't discover, don't mind, they don't ask the question, is there anything beyond this? Because we were in West Africa. In West Africa, we have the largest number of castles built by the British and the Dutch. In the whole world, we were colonized. And we were, we were colonized. Yes. They came. But we could have gone to find, discover them. And say, wow, we found some white people. These are natives. White natives. Is it not true? Why didn't we make a boat? We could have equally made the boat and crossed the sea. Huh? Yeah. We could have equally made a boat, cross the sea, say, wow, we've discovered some natives here, and there's an island called England. And we would have colonized them and made them a colony of West Africa. Wow. But we waited, and they came and found us, and they called us natives. And colonize us. So, when it comes to the work of God, it's the same thing. We have people who wait to be discovered. And people who don't ask any questions. Is there anything better than what I'm doing here in South Africa? Is there something I can discover beyond the sea? Is there anywhere else, is there anything else apart from the little that I know? And that is what we call the key of knowledge. Because knowledge opens you up. To so many things that you didn't know existed. And opens you up to many, many dimensions of God and dimensions of ministry. And it is important that we start coming off our islands and discover what other keys of knowledge there are. So that the other aspects of God and of ministry that exist, we can also get into. South Africa is a great country, but it's very much an island on its own. And the church is not even as great as the business world of South Africa. Because in Ghana and in many countries, you'll find ShopRite and uh, Woolworth and Mr. Price and whatever that you have here. We have them in different countries in Africa. The business people have reached out engine, this engine from here, yeah, MTN, and so on. They are all over, but you will never find a South African pastor outside South Africa. Look, you see this pastor in Lusaka? He's been here for 18 years. He's a South African. He came here as a missionary. He's built this big church in Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. Because some of you don't even know that Lusaka is the capital of Zambia. He's built this church in, in Lusaka. He's, uh, he's been here for 18 years. He's got the biggest church. Oh, you see in Zimbabwe, in Harare, Bulawayo. Oh, you see over here in Lesotho, there is a South African pastor. He's been here for 17 years. He's built a big church. You never see any South African. You, you, anywhere. No. No. And you say you have the Holy Spirit in South Africa. Let me tell you what happens when you have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you shall, you, you have the same Bible that we have. Acts 1.8. You shall receive power after the Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses. That means you become evangelistic. You will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. That is if the Holy Spirit is on you. If it's the Spirit of the world, it's different. But it is the Holy Spirit. You will become evangelistic. Most churches are not evangelistic. 
Many pastors cannot preach what I preached yesterday, John 3.16. If I give you, say, John 3.16, preach for one hour, you cannot do it. You cannot do it. You'll be stuck. You'll be stuck in the mud. You keep on saying, God so loved the world that he gave his only because God so loved the world that he gave his only because God so loved the world that he gave his God so loved the world that he gave his only because God so loved the world that he gave his only because that's what you say. Till the one hour is over. <laughs> yeah. You have the Holy Spirit? Read your Bible with me. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall have seven cars. You shall have three houses. You shall go to business. You shall go to America. You shall go to China. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses. Number one in Jerusalem. Then you will move to Judea, then to Samaria, then to the uttermost parts of the world. South Africans are stuck in Jerusalem. Yes, you are stuck right here. I've never seen any South African who's been able to make one step out of the country. You rather sit in your country and criticize Nigerians and criticize West Africans. When they are also being led by the Spirit, influenced by the Spirit, and they are going whatever, why don't you go to Nigeria and start churches? There are 180 million people waiting for you, Mr. Soul Winner. Mr. Holy Spirit Anointed Man, they are waiting for you. Instead of criticizing. Yeah. Instead of criticizing somebody, why don't you rise up and do something? I thought you were interested in souls. I thought you were interested. I thought you were Christians. I thought you have the Holy Spirit. Is it not the same Holy Spirit you claim to have? Or is the spirit of the world? Spirit of the world wants money. No, that's why you see pastors, they're always preaching about money. You know, money, prosperity, what have you. And they don't even have any money. In spite of all the prosperity, all they have are loans. Debts, mortgages. Yeah. Every day is money cometh, prosperity, this and that. If you are prosperous, let us see the prosperity in the work of God that you are doing. Let us see that the work of God is working. You shall be witness. Many people who claim, one day the whole, God said to me, the spirit in the church is not the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, that was my church, oh. One of my churches, or, the, or my church. He said, the spirit in the church is not the Holy Spirit. I said, oh Lord, how? Which spirit is here? He said, the spirit of the world. I said, what is the spirit of the world? He said, the spirit of the world is the spirit of the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. What are the things in the world? The lust of the eyes. The church is full of the lust of the eyes. We want to see. If you don't see power, impressive Cars, the big things, money splashing. You, you are not impressed. The last of the flesh and the pride of life. Things that make us proud in life. Yes, this is all that we have in the church. This is what we want. And this is what is coming from the pulpits. Most pastors, you, you see this like we are preaching about prosperity, a good life, money, this, something always earthly earthly minded messages yes so you have the Holy Spirit let me tell you go read your Bible you read the Bible and see what is the mission of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit landed on this earth in Acts chapter 2 within one hour 3,000 people were saved like on the arrival of the Holy Spirit when Peter received the Holy Spirit Within an hour, he had to give a sermon. 3,000 salvations took place. Acts 2. Acts 3, a man was healed. Leading to another opportunity to preach. Acts 4, another 5,000 by verse 5. 5 I mean, this is the effect of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Not the spirit of the world. 
The presence of the Holy Spirit on the church and on pastors. So if you say you are a leader of the church, let's ask ourselves, how many of us win souls? Why, why is it that when we go around preaching, people keep on saying, this is the first time we've ever had this. We've never had this history. We are making history. Everywhere is the same story. So when we were in Lesotho, the last time we had a crusade was 1979. Look, there's something wrong with us. And one of the reasons is because we are living on the islands of knowledge. And you don't know that. Because we are not preaching, we are not prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Prosperity is a basic doctrine of Christianity. God has called us. Abraham's blessings are ours. I wish above all things you prosper. It's standard. It's like it's the normal thing for Christianity. But it's not the main thing. And it's not the only thing. And it's a side thing, actually. That's not the goal of the church. It cannot be. You say you are prosperity preachers. Where, where is your crusade? Where is your evangelism? Where is your television ministry? What are you doing for God? You say you have the Holy Spirit, you are prosperity. What are you doing with the prosperity? What is it for? Look, listen, if we don't come back to the Holy Spirit, we have fallen into apostasy, I tell you. We may call ourselves churches, but we are dead and far from what God wants us to be. Look carefully at the church. Look carefully at the church and read in, he said, I write to you because you are dead. I, I write to you because you are dead. It's like, when you are dead, I will not leave you. I'm talking to you, and the reason I'm talking to you is because you are dead. There's no life. And we are not bringing life to people. So we need the Holy Spirit, and we need to come out of the isolation that has gripped us and taken away our fruitfulness. Are you listening to me? Yes. There's no need to spend all your time trying to have a good life. Trying to have things on earth. We are supposed to be eternity minded. We are Christians. Look, it is under our watch when we were pastors, myself and people like you. It is during our time that the world, Christianity has dropped to become a second religion in the world. Like it hasn't happened, let, let's say, during the time of our fathers. Or let's say, after we are gone. It's in our time. In our type of preaching. Our type of messages. It is our kind of ministry. That has led Christianity to drop in its importance. And has allowed other religions to come and take over the whole world. To the point that they are now taking nations, nation by nation, nation by nation. And when they take over, you know, Derek Prince said it. He said, you can have a church in a communist country. Years ago, I didn't understand it. Derek Prince. You know Derek Prince? Yeah. He said, you can have a church in a communist country, but cannot have a church in certain countries where they have certain religions. You can't. I didn't understand it then. But he had lived there. He knew. You can't. You can't. We've been to West Africa, every country, except one country where you, Christians are not welcome there. Christians, there's no Christian there. I went to a certain country, which is, um, uh, well, in the north of Africa. They said, there are three things we don't have in this country. When I, when I landed, and I went, they said, there are three things we don't have here. I said, what is that? He said, one, we don't have Jews here. Two, we don't have Christians. And three, we don't have Americans. These three, we don't have it in this country. Yes. Three things we don't have here. We don't have Jews. We don't have Christians. We don't have Americans here. They are not welcome here. Hey. <laughs> so, God wants 
us to expose ourselves to knowledge. Amen. And, and he calls it the key. Jesus calls it the key of knowledge. The key. It's like it's a key. So to be exposed to somebody or to be exposed to knowledge and to another island is one of the greatest blessings for a person who is in the ministry and somebody who wants to serve God. You know, one day I went somewhere to pray. I went somewhere to pray. And uh, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I said, Lord, I need a cow to follow. You see, we are sheep. We are sheep. Psalm 95, 6 and 7. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. Just the sheep of his hand. We are just the sheep. Just the sheep of his hands. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker. For we are the people of his pasture. We are the sheep of his hand. We need to follow the shepherd and more easily to have a sheep in front of us and we follow. All the animals, that is their key to guidance. Give me a cow. And I was praying because I couldn't find a cow that was ahead of me in the ministry. I prayed for seven days and I put on a television. I mean, I kept on putting on Christian television. And um, I saw a cow right there. I said, wow. And the Lord said to me, that's it, right there. On the last few hours before I left, I'd been there for seven days. Yeah. Where you see that there is a world of knowledge, and you see that there, there are keys of knowledge. And there are people who are doing far more. Like you are like a little, little insect compared to what the person is doing. And where the person is in ministry. But it's, it's your isolation that doesn't let you see that you are a little insect. You are an insect in ministry. Oh yes. Recently I was thinking of building a school. And I was discussing, you know, I told my wife where to go for the land and to try to work on it. Then I was thinking, you know, these school things is a hassle. Then I was listening to somebody, a cow that's ahead. And he, he said, this year I opened 44 schools. This year, I opened 44 primary schools and nine secondary schools. With all with buildings, dormitories, school, classroom blocks, brand new, he said. And I thought of myself, how stupid, I don't know what word I can use to describe myself. How nothing I am. And that is how, we, that's what God wants us to realize. How little we are, like all that we are doing is very small. Even as we've gone around South Africa, last night after the crusade, I was talking with some, some of the brothers. The only conclusion we came to was depression. We just became depressed. It's like there's so much to be done. So, so many places to go to. We've, although we've gone and we've, we've been here since Christmas. Before Christmas, we just took a short break came back and we've been here. It's like there, we can go from town to town from now till December. We still wouldn't have covered everything. Oh yeah. But you see, it's when you sit in your world, you feel happy and you clap for yourself for doing nothing. Yes. And so God is taking us in this time. He's showing us things and say, look at this. Yes, you are great, but look at something wonderful that can be a blessing to you and that you can learn from. Amen. So the key of knowledge. Knowledge is a great key. But amazing is the fact that many people don't even want to do more. Dr. Go was talking about a mega church, I believe. Yeah. Why you should have a mega church. 
I mean, look at the people in South Africa. 45 million. Huh? How many people are in churches? And even the church, what type of church are they in? The things that are going on in South Africa, you see, you may not know, it's because of your, your, your island. You are, you are in an island here. When you step out, you realize that the kind of things you have in South Africa, they are not found in other countries. Some of the negative things, you don't have it in other countries. Oh yeah, you don't have it. There's nothing like this. It doesn't happen. I, you have a pastor and it's like the members in the church go by color. No, 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 no. It's only here. <laughs> it's a sickness. Yes, it's a sickness you have. Now, a black man cannot, many times when we talk, when we talk to white people, as we talk to them, they ask him, you are not from here, isn't it? And if they immediately know from the confidence with which we are talking with them that we are not from South Africa. Yes. We've been asked so many times, you are not from here, isn't it? Okay, I see. So God is giving us the key of knowledge and the key of wisdom. Turn with me to Mark chapter 6, verse 1, 2. Mark chapter 6, verse 1. And he went out from thence and came out into his own country. Wow. And his disciples follow him. Mm. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Wow. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this? What wisdom is this? Which is given unto him. What wisdom is this? That even such mighty works are wrought mighty by works. his hands. Mighty works are a result of wisdom. What wisdom is this? What wisdom is this? What wisdom is this? That such mighty works, mighty works, mighty works, Mighty works are wrought by his hands. What wisdom is this? Whence, the Matthew 1, Matthew 13, 54, it says, Whence has this man this wisdom? Or where did this man get this wisdom from? Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Matthew 13, 54. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works. Mighty works in God. Mighty works of being able to turn the crime wave in South Africa instead of a colored person being associated with drugs and fighting and guns and drug, uh, what do you call it? Gangs and what have you being associated with God or instead of the black community being associated with poverty or whatever it is associated with, being associated with God, or instead of the white community, being associated with whatever bad things you have, it's associated with something else. Associated with mighty works in God. Mighty. Mighty works. What, what wisdom is this? Where, where, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Where did he get this wisdom from? You see, this is the point I'm trying to make. You live on an island of wisdom. You, you, and everybody knew that this man has got some new wisdom. That's how come he was doing these mighty works. He must have had some key of knowledge or some wisdom that is now changing him. And he's now doing mighty works. Mighty works. Mighty works. Mighty works. Yes. Churches is a mighty work to get people to come. Church, to have a church is a mighty work. To have a big church is a mighty work. To have a church with a building is a mighty work. Many pastors in South Africa are in tents or in rented places. Yes. 
What wisdom is this? Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Having more than one church is a mighty work. I have 1,917 churches. They are all my children and my disciples. By the grace of God. Mighty works. Mighty works with cathedrals. That's how come I'm here. <laughs> the churches that I started, founded, dedicated by Yongicho, somebody is pastoring it. The other one that we dedicated six or seven years ago or eight years ago, some people are pastoring it. And the other one that I've started now, my son is pastoring, and then other pastors are pastoring different ones. I'm now a pastor of children. Yes. Mighty works. Not money works, mighty works. <laughs> Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? This is the point I'm trying to explain to you. That when God wants to bless you, huh, he will introduce you out of your island of knowledge to another island of knowledge and wisdom. And that knowledge is a key. And that wisdom will lead to mighty works in your life, which you have not done before. Being debt free is a mighty work. Not owing anybody. When you drive a car and you have to pay 300 rands every month, it is not your car. Or you don't know that it's not your car. Eh? When you live in a church building, which you have to pay for every whatever, that is not a mighty work. Don't you remember what the Bible says? The borrower is a servant. He's a servant of the lender. Okay, after we close, go and Google churches for sale. Churches for sale. you see the list. You can't even read all. In America and all over the world. Churches for sale. Go and Google it and see. For sale, for sale, for sale, for sale. Churches, buildings. Because they can't keep up the payments. Yes. Houses for sale. All these mortgage. That's why I said those who are preaching the prosperity, show us your prosperity stage one by not owing anybody. That is the first that we will be impressed that you are now a prosperous person. You say you are a prosperity preacher. So now show. Prosperity is shown by, number one, you're, you don't owe. Number two, your ability to give. And number three, your owning of a house, which you don't owe anything for. That time you are, then you started on the line of prosperity. The rest are just games. Clever people have put you in arrangements. Yes. Clever people have arranged you. The people who are making the cars in South Africa, they need people to buy them. Otherwise, the factories will close down. So they have been able to contract the whole nation to come and pay 300 rands a month. So everybody works for them. And the banks too. They need, they need people to come. So they have, each manager has a, I'm supposed to get uh, 40 people this month to sign as employees to pay. But the people don't know that they are becoming employees and servants. They tell, oh, you're just getting a loan. We are your helpers. We are just helping you too. Wow. We put a smile on your face. You don't like what I'm saying. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. I'm introducing you to a new island. I'm introducing. You are on an island. You are on an island. You don't know. You are on an island. What you, what you know is what's on the island. You don't know other things. That's what I'm saying. You are on the island of knowledge. You don't know about other things going on. Yes. As we've come here, we, are, we don't owe anybody. Whether you give an offering or you don't give any offering, it doesn't mean anything to us. <laughs> Whether you pay with one round or two round, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's just a duty for us to be here. We are paid for everything already. 
There is nothing you, you need to give. At all. At all. These books here that we are offering, we can afford to give everybody free. But we will not give free because when you give free book, people don't value it and they don't read it. So I wouldn't give it free. Yes. I wouldn't give it, but I'll give it at a price that many, almost anybody who is serious can get it. Yeah. But we, are, we are not doing business. I am not doing business. Look, the mark of the beast is the mark of buying and selling. Profit making. With that mark, when it comes on your church and on your ministry, the mark of, I will not do something unless it's profitable. I will not go here unless I get money. I will not do this unless I can make a profit. That is the mark of the beast in Revelation. It's the mark of profit making. And that is the mark on the church today. That's why you don't see people doing certain things anymore. Because it's not profitable. The people are too poor to pay. The mark, the stamp of the beast. The stamp of money and profit making. It's a curse. It sounds strange because you live on an island. I said it sounds strange because you live on an island. You are not used to a ministry that does not need the money. Yes. Is that somebody that's doing that? Let me calculate. Clerk Stop is a financial town. When I, we come and have an offering, when we rent the stadium and we rent this and we rent that, when we subtract this from that, we make that and the offering we will get and so on. When we balance, we will make a profit of this. Nonsense nonsense that is the mark of the beast that's why there are no crusades even in south africans have asked we say we are going to springbok you are going to appetite why what are you going to do there why you ask you've been a pastor for 25 years you are asking me why i'm going to appington you ask me why i'm going to springbok are you not are you not reading the same bible with me Go ye into all the world. What's the song we sing it? I will go to the ends of the... Jesus, sing it. Jesus, I believe in you and I will go mm. to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth for you. Alone are the Son of God and all the world will see that you are God. Do you know this song? You are God. You don't know this song? Is it no hill song? Hill song? It's a what? Sing it. Jesus, I believe in <laughs> you, and I will go to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth for you. For you. Alone are the Son of God, and all the world will see that you are God. All the world will see. You are God. Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you, and I will go to the ends of the earth. I'll go to the ends of the earth for you. Alone are the Son of God, and all the world will see that you are God. You are God. Oh, Jesus, I believe in you. And I will go to the ends of the earth. I'll go to the ends of the earth for you. You see, Christian, Lord, I'm the Son of God, and all the world will see that you are God. All the world will see you are. You are God, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I believe, I believe in you. missionaries where are the missionaries no more no more missionary is a dead profession it's like how you have 
maybe mining in a town and the, the, the gold gets finished and you say, there's no more miners here. Missionary, we were in Kuruman, we went to Robert Moffat's uh, mission. Yeah, Kuruman. We had a crusade there, Kuruman. <laughs> to the ends of the earth. For us, it's the ends of the earth. Yes, it's the end. We don't know what these places are. Never heard of it before. And when we got there, we found Robert Moffat, 600 miles or 1,175 kilometers from Cape Town. He landed from England or Cape Town and came with a cat. They had his cat there, pulled by a horse from Cape Town, 1,000 kilometers inside to Kuruman. And he started his mission there. A white man in the midst of that was the largest uh, tribe in the area. So he, 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 he came there in, with great danger. And in those days, they were not afraid of human beings. You know, now you're afraid of human beings. They were afraid of lions and animals in those days. But now we're afraid of human beings. Because the, the danger was lions. And David Livingston was attacked there by a lion. That's where David Livingston came. And married one of this man's children. To the tribe there. And you see, we saw a book with his handwriting. He lived there, came there, lived there, died. Buried there, built a church. And today there are more millions of people cut off. Cut off, handed over to demons. Handed over to evil spirits of gangs and drugs and wickedness. HIV. And we are sitting here. And the profession of a missionary, somebody who goes and says, I will go to the ends of the earth. It is a non-existent profession today. Oh. It's wonderful. Because the knowledge of sacrifice, this book, losing, suffering, sacrificing, and dying, is out of the church. Rubbish. I was in America at a book launch. I was in America at a book launch. And uh, an American publishing, she came, she saw the book. She said, what a terrible title of a book. What a terrible, who will buy this book? What? Losing, suffering, sacrificing, and dying. This is the cross. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is the power. That's where power is. It's found in the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ. And when you take away the cross, when you take away the cross from the church, you take away sacrifice. Take up your cross and follow me. If any man says he will come unto me and hate not his brother and his sister, his wife, his children, his brother and his sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What does it mean? What does it mean? You throw it out. You throw what gives power to the church. You throw it out. First Corinthians 1, the preaching of the cross is power. That's the power. That's the power part. Have you not seen this other religion? They want to die. They are ready to die. We are ready to die for what we believe. But which religion in this world has a founder who went when you go somewhere to die, you know you are going to die. And you go there intentionally so that you die. What is it called in English? Pardon? Suicide mission. Which, which religion in the world do you know who had a leader who went on a suicide mission? Like he went somewhere. He knows that when I go, I will die here. And I'm still going. Do you know any religion like that? Hare Krishna. Is that what you said? Christianity. Yes. Our leader, Jesus, he is the one who went to give himself up. He said, kill me. When it was even time to defend himself, he said, no, I have no comment to make. Are you this? Are you, I have no comment. Say something so that we set you free. <laughs> no comment. But just said, do you know what I have power? He said, you don't have power unless it's given to you. Pilate became even more frightened. Other 
religions have taken up the power that comes in sacrifice. And a book like this will not be. And I don't write my book for, for making profit. So I don't care whether you like the title. In fact, this book actually had a nicer title. And I felt it was not plain enough. It used to be called Take Up Your Cross. I changed it to, no, let me make something clear. Losing. Christians must lose. If any man loses his life for my sake, he will gain it. Christians must suffer. Philippians 1 says, God has called us not only to believe on his name, but also to suffer. Suffering is part of Christianity. And because we don't preach it, that's why there's no power to protect us from HIV. Because the suffering that comes from controlling your erections. Do you understand? The suffering that comes from controlling your erections and your sexual desires. We are not prepared to suffer. Yes. We are not prepared to suffer. The suffering that comes sacrificing. I'll sacrifice this pleasure. We are not prepared to take up our cross and be a living sacrifice. These are words in the Bible. And dying. If you lose your life for my sake, you will gain it. This Christianity, basic. And older pastors and older Christians will appreciate what I'm saying. If the young ones who you, you don't know this, this is how Christianity, this is what Christianity is built on. The Christianity in South Africa is built on what I'm saying. It's we who are the new generation. We are the, um, what is the name of this boy? The guy who was serving Elisha. His boys, yeah. Gehazis. We are the Gehazis. Elijah had anointing. And the, the follower of Elijah loved the anointing. I want anointing. But Gehazi wanted money. So we are the Gehazi pastors. You are Reverend Gehazi, whatever your name is. You want money. Gehazi went and told Naaman the Syrian, give me money. Give me change of clothes. Yes. But our, our, uh, an older generation, we love the anointing. But at this generation, they love the money. And, and that leads to leprosy. That's why many pastors are falling. But it takes God's grace to stand. Without the grace, you fall just now. Many pastors are becoming homosexuals. Many pastors are falling into fornication. Pastors, many leaders cannot stand at all. Yes, cannot stand at all. Falling into lying, stealing. Yes. There's no power anymore. Yeah, because you throw away the cross. It's gone. And the grace of God is no more with us. Leprosy have descended on the church. Are you there or you are going home? You can go home now if you like. Because it may get worse as I go on. You understand? Yeah. Are you still around? Yes. You sure you're still around? Yes. Shall I continue? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So, the key of knowledge and the key of wisdom. Now, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, all right, is a key. Knowledge of the anointing is a key to doing exploits. Behind every exploit in the ministry is a great secret. Like any great thing you accomplish, there's a great secret. Now, right here, I have some books here on the anointing. It is actually one of my favorite topics, the anointed and his anointing. This book is not in this collection. Steps to the anointing. You need, you need to know the steps to get into the anointing. All right? Catch the anointing. You need to catch the anointing. Amplify your ministry with miracles 
and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And the sweet influence of the anointing. Each of these, each of these, okay, is a different topic. Now somebody said, why do, you, why do you have all these books? What are these books for? It's the key of knowledge. The key of knowledge that has given me some of the largest crusades in the world today. That's a reality. Somebody said, why do you have all these books? It's the key of wisdom. What wisdom is this? What wisdom is it that this mighty works? And one of my gifts is to teach what I'm doing. You see, people can do things, but they will not teach what they are doing. Like they don't teach how they are doing it. But I'm not here to tell you what I've done, but I'm here to share with you how to do it. Because for me, being in ministry has been a painful climb with no help, only criticism. Have you been criticized before? Welcome. Amen. It's a fellowship. It's a group. <laughs> when I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a medical doctor. I went to school from 1982 to 1989. 1982, October to 1989, March. 21st of March, I became a doctor. 1989, medical. And I had to learn so many things. Difficult books, big books, exams, clinical, oral exams, steeplechase exams, interviews, practical, surgery. Oh, and I can tell you, becoming a pastor, I have found that it's far more difficult to be a pastor than to be a doctor. So if you are a pastor or a minister, congratulations, because you are in a far higher calling than any calling of any, any sort. Very difficult. There are many things on the road. And when I became a minister, I was looking for what to do because as a, as a doctor, on Mondays, what do we have on Mondays? Word rounds. Tuesdays, we have what? Minor cases for surgery. Wednesdays, what do we have? Outpatients department clinic. Thursdays, what do we have? Major clinic, uh, major surgery, long cases like takes about three or four hours to operate on one person. And on Fridays, what do we have? Emergency duty. So a doctor's work is laid out. Monday, you do this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So when I became a pastor, I was wondering, so what am I going to do on Monday? What am I going to do on Tuesday? What should I do on Wednesday? What should I do on Thursday? What shall I do on Friday? Aha, uh -huh, you see. But because of my background, I, I really needed to know what to do. And how do you get the power and the ability to do it? Did you share with them about transform? Transform. PVCI? Okay. So you see that the works are... P I found out that the work of a pastor, PVCI, prayer, visitation, counseling, interaction. You see it in that book, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry. That's, that's to, to be a pastor. I don't mean to be a prophet. Yeah. Because the Bible says in Matthew 9 that the sheep were scattered because there was no shepherd. It didn't say the sheep were scattered because there's no prophet. Sheep don't scatter because there's no prophet. They scatter because there's no shepherd. Shepherding is a great job. It's a wonderful job to be a shepherd, a pastor. I know some of you want to be prophets and have great visions. But I tell you, being a shepherd is a great work. Now, how do you get the ability to do this work? Like I was telling you, knowledge and wisdom. But behind it all, unlike every secular job, you need some kind of invisible power that makes it possible for what you are doing. Amen. Including preaching. Including preaching. Preaching, you think, oh, it's just shouting, just talking, just reading points. No. You will learn as you go along that 
there are different types of preaching and teaching. And that the more anointed your teaching is, the more it is wanted. You, you understand that point? Like when more people want your teaching, they come to your church. So more people come to the church. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know whether your teaching is anointed in a local church, it's by the people attending. So as the people in your church are getting finished, you should be looking for anointing. Because when you are anointed and even your preaching doesn't make sense, people still come. I've watched television and I've seen people who preach things that cannot be understood. And I see a lot of people there and I say, wow. What are they doing there? But they, they don't understand what is happening. It doesn't make sense. Haven't you seen that on television before? Somebody is talking, explaining, it's like, what is this man saying? And what are the people doing there? Why are they listening to this person? So the secret that you need, are you listening, is the anointing. And no, no one ever to told me about the anointing, except Benny Hinn, who was preaching about steps to the anointing. And I, I didn't really understand what he was preaching about. But when you study the Bible, you find out that every ministry starts when there is an anointing. Till then, it has not really started. Zechariah said, not by might, not by power, by my spirit. Jesus Christ didn't, he was known as a carpenter. Oh yeah. Jesus was repairing, I'm sure Jesus could have, I don't know if Jesus could have made such a nice ceiling. You know, pastor, this is a very beautiful ceiling. You know? But Jesus was making ceilings. He was doing roofs. He was doing doors. He was making chairs, coffins. I mean, whatever you need. Carpenter Jesus, just send him a WhatsApp. He'll be right there. <laughs> then one day he went to the riverside. Pastor John the Baptist was preaching. And John the Baptist made an altar call. All those here who want to repent, come forward now. And they all came and Jesus was in the line. And when Jesus got to Jesus' turn, John the Baptist saw him. Because God had said, I will show you the one. He said, this is he. Wow. They said, no, I can't touch you. And Jesus said, don't start that nonsense now. Just baptize me quickly. <laughs> And he was baptized. And when he came out of the water, a dove came on him. That's the anointing. And immediately, the spirit was upon him and led him to the wilderness. One of the first things that happens when the Holy Spirit comes on you is guidance. Guidance. Divine guidance. You start to know what to do. And he starts to lead you. The art of hearing. The art of hearing is a very important subject. Every pastor here must specialize in the art of hearing. Oh, yes. You must, you, look, what hope do you have? What hope does a cow have? A cow walking from Klexdorp to Cape Town. Do you think the cow will get there? The cow says, see you, I'm going to Cape Town. Bye. Will he get there? He will turn into Chisanyama on the way. Is it not true? There's no hope. You need to be led. You need a shepherd. And you need to be led by the spirit, the mighty spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit that has led me to come here. 
I believe it. I believe I'm in the will of God coming here. Amen. So, Jesus became anointed and from then on, he started to minister. And he changed radically from a carpenter. You know, he was already into the Bible, the word and so, but he was not what he was, what we know Jesus to be. Then the disciples. I'm giving you examples of how ministry starts with the anointing. The disciples, they, they, they had been with Jesus. They had even been preaching. You see, many times your preaching is actually your preparation. You are not even yet in the ministry. Oh, yeah. You are yet to enter the ministry. It's all part. The disciples were sent out. They even did some miracles, but they were not yet in the ministry. They were not yet separated unto ministry. Jesus told them, look, don't even bother. Just go and wait. When the Holy Spirit comes, you'll be okay. You've been with me, but it's not enough. You need to be anointed. Elisha, clever guy. Everybody say, clever Elisha. He had his eyes on the anointing. Some of you have your eyes on the color. Some of you have your eyes on money. But when Elijah was about to go, he said, what shall I give you? What do you want from me? What do you, you've been following me all this time. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Do you want my house? No. Elijah! Elisha, do you want my car? No. Do you want my chariot? No. Do you want my money? No, I don't want your money. Okay, do you want my wife? <laughs> Elisha said, she's an old lady now. You know I cannot do much with her. <laughs> what do you want from me? What do you want from me? I want the anointing from you. This is all that I want. Because the anointing will bring money. When you're anointed, money comes. When you're anointed, money comes. Oh, you don't have. Money comes to the anointed. The ministry will have money. Cars will come to the anointed. All the cars we are using, they are all our cars. They are not rented cars. Neither are they mortgage cars or pay every month cars. And the trucks and the buses. Yes. What else did he ask him for? Money, house, cars. Wife, women will like you when you are anointed. Look, you will never struggle to have a wife or I mean a beloved or no, 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 no. The Bible says because of the ointment, the virgins do love thee. Songs of Solomon. Go ahead and check it. Because of the anointing, the virgins do love you. When I became anointed, so many people liked me. Yes. But I already had a beloved. Yes. So there was no way for them. But I, I can feel it. Something I can feel. <laughs> the anointing gives you everything that you need. So that's why I say Elisha was clever. Very clever. He said, you know, I want the anointing. Moses said, don't take your spirit from me. Uh, don't, uh, if your presence does not go, I'm not going. David said, don't take your... And David loved calling himself. You know, he changed his name after he was anointed. He kept on, the Lord's anointed. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, the Lord's anointed. <laughs> the Lord's anointed. The Lord's anointed. The Lord. He will not even call his name David again. Just the anointed of the Lord. It was the greatest day of his life when Samuel poured the anointing on his head. So you must seek the anointing. But you will see pastors will be walking around and they're not even interested in the anointing. The sweet influence of the anointing. Or steps to the anointing. I mean, a pastor would walk by and say, ha, steps to the anointing. I'm, I'm already anointed. You are not anointed. Some of you are institutional pastors. Yes. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. You know, one day, one day the, a pastor criticized me. He said, you know, the reason why you have to preach about loyalty is because of the way you run your church. 
And I looked at him. He was pastoring a church which was 160 years old. And he, he, had, he was an institutional pastor. Like he has received the appointment from the one before to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Mm -hmm. He was not fighting to build something. Yeah, it's already there. You just come and inherit it. Do you see? So when, 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 you, are in, when you are in an institution, you, you may or may not be anointed, depending on you. You may be in the institution and you'll be anointed, but you may be in it and you'll not be anointed because it's, it's yours. It's, it's the next position. It's you. So you must seek for the anointing. The anointing is the basis, is the secret behind ministry. And that's why I, I want to really encourage, if you don't read anything, you know, take this book, Steps to the Anointing, and whether you buy it or it doesn't change anything with me. It's a blessing to you. Yes. I'm trying to take you out of your island of knowledge to show you that there, there's another island. Yes. And, and let us be open Catch the anointing. Or, I love this one, the sweet influences. Because you, you can't really see the anointing on somebody. But you can see the effect of the anointing. See, when somebody is anointed, you can't, you can't see like, you, you see if, even it's a normal person. One pastor, friend of mine, he told his wife, he said, listen, because I think his wife was becoming too familiar. He told her, don't let my humanity deceive you as to who you are dealing with. Wow. He said, <laughs> he said, my humanity does not reveal who you are dealing with. You see me going to the toilet to poo poo, to wee wee, to, to do this, producing gas all over the place. Don't let my humanity deceive you as to who you are dealing with. Give the Lord a shout of amen for somebody. Because the humanity of a person can deceive you. It's like, oh, it's nothing. The anointing is, is, is a wonderful mystery. I had a, I had a, I had a dream. One day, I was in my office. And an angel came down the stairs and came into my office. And my angel, the angel had a had a, a jacket. Give me a jacket. The angel gave had a jacket. Beautiful jacket. And a jar. Give me that jar. This one looks better. And the angel said, and you know what was in the jar? Ashes. Yeah, it was a jar. Like, this is a bottle, but that was a jar. And he said, this is your father. Your father is gone. And these are his ashes. And the angel turned. I was standing there. I was stunned because I was downstairs in my basement. And the angel turned and put the jar on the shelf. Then he said, the angel said, and this was his jacket. This was your father's jacket. And he said, you must wear this jacket. Put it on. Am I doing the right thing? Wow. And the angel said, this was your father's jacket. And you must wear it for some time. Then he said, after that, you will have to take it off. And give it to somebody who's going to wear this jacket. And you will go into an, another jar. You go into a jar, just like the other jar. Yeah. So, the jars will keep on increasing. Give me another jar. 
the jars will keep on increasing. Of the different people who've worn the jacket and the mantle. Thank you. Wow. All these people have worn, but the jacket keeps moving from one person to another. Yes. The mantle. Elijah gave it to Elisha. Elisha was going to give it to Gehazi, but he loved so much money. He was money-minded. And he lost the chance to wear the mantle. But when Elisha got the mantle, he didn't really understand what it meant. It was like he had asked for the anointing and all he got was this old jacket that fell to the ground. And he picked it. What is the use of all these 27 years I've followed this man? Look at what I get for. For my faithfulness. When he got to the river Jordan, he was so frustrated. Oh, stupid. Ah! The river started parting. And he looked at the mantle and he said, wow. It seems I have something. It seems I have something. Yes. Why do you know you have the anointing? Because the river that opened to your father will open to you. The problems that bow to your father will bow to you. The obstacle that gave way to your father will give way to you when you have the anointing that he had. Oh yes. People don't know what the anointing is. You see, the anointing is an invisible this one is visible, but it's an invisible jacket. You wear it and people don't know that you are wearing it. That's why I call it the sweet influences of the anointing. Oh, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Look for the word anointing. Read these books. Learn, you will find out that something wonderful, the invisible influence that makes things work a certain way. Now, many years ago, 28 years ago, I was a medical student in my very last year of medical school. And in the last year, we had to go to a town outside the capital to study our, to do rural medicine. So I had a lot of time. And one night, you know, I used to listen to Kenneth Hagin. Somebody gave me a book by Kenneth Hagin. So I used to listen to this book. I, used to li I learned about him and I, it's like, that's why I said that I was taken out of my island. Huh. Are you listening to me? I was taken out of my island and I was introduced to another world. Yes. So now I was listening to Kenneth Hagin and one night I was praying in the room. I was alone. There were only two of us, two of us to that hospital and we were there for one month. But I was in my room and my friend was in his room. And one night I was praying. I got on my knees and the tape was playing. Those days we used tapes. And I had a special tape recorder that my wife gave me. It was an auto reverse. Goes, comes. So it was playing all night. That's what I like. All night. So it was playing. And I was kneeling. And then I slept. How many have slept when you were praying before? Yeah. God still sees you on your knees. <laughs> Amen. Listen carefully. And as I was on my knees and the tape was playing, suddenly something jumped out of the tape. This was in 1988. Something jumped out of the tape and entered into my belly. Yeah. And then I heard a voice in the room. And the voice said, from today, you can teach. From today, you can teach. June 1988. Then I heard another voice, different from the first voice. And this voice said, I'll prove it to you. Yeah, that's what happened to me. And you see, up till today, you cannot see on me. <laughs> There's nothing. Well, you can't see anointing on me. But you can see the effect. You can see the effect. From today, you can teach. Now, although I had a church, I had a church with about 25 members in a classroom. 
Everybody in my church was a student. Everybody in my church was nobody. And I was their pastor. And I was also a student. But that day, I became anointed. Now, when I went back, there was a lady called Mercy. She, she wrote a letter to her friend. She said, there's something different about Brother Dag. There's something different. You know, he, I came, I started preaching about the prodigal son. He said, there's something different. She, she's the first person who noticed the anointing. Yeah. Now, that anointing, the mantle of my father, Kenneth Hagen, that came on me, is, is the same man. That's, that's how come I'm doing what I'm doing. Look at the books. Almost 12 million books published. Yeah. Many pastors write books. Maybe we print 2,000, 1,000. 5,000 if you print a lot. Nowadays, people don't even print. There's no one to read it. Yeah. And here I am. I'm not American. If I was American, it would even be different. But you see, I'm from Ghana. Africa. <laughs> Africa. True. One day I was in uh, Korea. A whole lot of white people came around me, wanted to take pictures. I said, where are you? Where are you guys? So we are from Russia. I said, well, where do you know me from? So your books, you are very famous from your books. Yeah. When I arrived in um, Siberia one time, these television cameras came around me and they were saying, you know, we want to interview. I said, what, what, what do you want to ask? He said, did you ever think you will be Doug Heward Mills? I said, what? Did I ever think I would be me? But, you know, I found it amazing. I'll ask somebody, Do you, have you read my book? He said, yes. Then I asked, what book? Then he will mention it. I said, what is that? I said, oh, transform your pastoral ministry. What book have you read? What is that? Catch the anointing. Hey, what book have you read? What is that? Mega church. <laughs> in their language, in Russian, in Portuguese, in Spanish, in French, in different languages. So many countries. Oh, yeah. You see, when you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, you have the spirit that attributes things to God. I attribute this to God. I don't attribute it to just cleverness or some other idea. Attribute things to God. Attribute things to God. That night, from today, you can teach. Yeah. Where is it? Makaneh thing. Where is it? That thing. There. From today, you can teach. That's why I believe in letting pastors listen to messages and preaching. You must listen to preaching. Look, doctor, let's read some verses because maybe you may think that the experience I describe is not biblical. Read, read Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2, or verse 1 and 2, so that you have any context. Wow. Ezekiel chapter 2, mm. verse 1. Mm. And he said unto me, He said unto me, Son of man, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. Stand upon thy feet. And I will speak unto thee. And I will speak unto thee. Okay, listen, everybody, are you watching? Why don't you, why don't you listen? All these things are in this book. Steps to the anointing. Steps to the anointing. Catch the anointing. Everything, all that we are saying is in there. There's nothing to write. You just get the book. Read on. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me. The Spirit did what? Entered, entered into me. Entered into me when? When he spake unto me. When he spake unto me. And set me upon my feet. set me upon my feet. So the Spirit entered me when he spake to me. So when God is speaking to you, the Spirit can enter you. As I'm speaking now, the spirit is entering you. Amen. The spirit did what? Entered into me when? He spake. When he spake to me. Ezekiel. Two, two. I'm introducing you out of your island of knowledge. You see, how many realize that this knowledge was not on your island? This one was not on your island before. Not on your island. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. I'm giving you more knowledge. I'm showing you more knowledge. Acts chapter 10, 
verse 44. Acts 10, 44. This is the famous sermon by uh, Peter. Peter's famous sermon when he went to Cornelius' house. He had this fantastic preaching experience and he preached very powerfully. Let's, read, let's listen to what happened. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Read it. While Peter yet spake these words. While Peter yet, while Peter was preaching. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost did what? Fell on them which heard. Those who were hearing the preaching. The Holy Ghost. And what happened when the Holy Ghost fell on them? The next verse, 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. A gift is going to be poured out on you as you listen to the preaching of the word of God. The gift will be poured out on you. And that's what happened to me that night in Suhum. The gift was poured out on me. The gift was poured out. From today, you can teach. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.17, I'm giving you knowledge. He says, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice unto him from the excellent glory, saying, this is my beloved son. You see, he received from God the Father honor and glory. You see, I received from God the Father honor and glory. That's the honor. This is my honor to stand before you. It's my honor to be a preacher. I receive from God the Father honor and glory. When what? When there came such a voice to me from the excellent glory. You see, a voice comes from the excellent glory and says, from today you can teach. Here I am teaching. Even at crusade, you can see I'm teaching. When I preach at a crusade, if you have eyes to see, you will see it's the teaching anointing that is on the stage. Yes, I'm explaining the gospel to you. Yes, you understand it better. Have you turned to 2 Peter 1 verse 17? Read it. For there came from God, for he received from God the Father. He received, from, I've received from God the Father. You will also receive from God the Father. I said you will receive from God the Father. He received 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 from God the Father. When, when, what happened? When there came such a voice, a voice unto him from the excellent glory, the excellent glory. He says, for the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out unto those who were listening. That is why, doctor, where are these things? Gadgets. We have these. Yes. The makane. I asked the Lord, what shall I do? He said, put the makane. I asked the Lord, which one is the most powerful of my preaching? Is it the crusade? Is it the camp? Is it the Sunday preaching? Is it Tuesday? He said, no, it's the camp. I said, why the camp? He said, because of the effect. It is at camps that I teach some of these things and I train the pastors. People who are not pastors and they become pastors. Yes. It's, it is this camp that makes people go out as missionaries. I have missionaries all over. All they want to do is to serve God. Even in South Africa, with churches, we have churches and buildings. With congregation all over South Africa. Yeah. South Africans and non-South Africans. South Africans who come to our Bible school. They are pastoring churches, nice churches with buildings. Here you are. And he said, put it together. This is 813. It's like 800 CDs or tapes all together in one little thing. And it's called the Makane. The Makane. And this is available for you. I brought it. From today you can teach. From today you can teach. From today you can teach. Three of them. Makane Extra and Makane Iron. Makane Iron. There. All of them. Available. Listen. And keep listening. 
put on as a radio and pray. I always listen to preaching. As I'm, I'm here, I'm always listening to preaching. Oh, all the time. One time I listened to 85 messages on one topic from one pastor. He had different messages, 85 of them. I listened all, and I start again. So now I listened to one seven times. I used to listen to Kenneth Hagin preaching all the time, and I still do. I have every message he ever preached. You can see pastors who are going to do well. When you enter the shop, they say, give me everything, one of everything. When I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I entered the bookshop of Kenneth Hagin. I said, I was, oh, were you there with me? She was there. One of my people was with me many years ago. When, which year was it? 2000. 99, 2000. Yeah, 2000. I said to her, take everything from the shop. One of everything. Pack, I'm taking everything. One of every. I don't care what, what the topic is. For, for he received. For he received from God the Father. He received from God the Father. Honor and glory. The greatest honor is to be a pastor. To be a preacher. What is greater than that? What is greater than that? I count all things as done for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. For which I have suffered the loss of all things. And I do count them but done that I may gain Christ. Pastors, are you proud of being pastors? Are you glad you are ministers? Are you glad that you are ministers of the gospel? What a blessing. What an honor. It's time for you to receive the key of knowledge. That's why we are here. I'm trying to introduce you to another key, key of knowledge, which is not on your island. Look, every island has certain animals. And there are some animals that are not there. That's all. I mean, it, it, on your island, there are certain things, and there are certain things that are not. When I went to Jamaica, I said, what do you have? What do you not have? I said, here, we don't have snakes. There's no snake in Jamaica. Do you know why? Because they have, what the animal called? Mongoose. They don't have even one snake. The mongoose have eaten every single snake on the island. So if you want to know about snakes, you have to go to another island. Yeah. They've eaten every single snake. There's no snake there. I try to get, I'm trying to get some mongoose to my campus eat the snakes that are there. Hey. For he received from God the Father. Wow. Look at me standing here. When I started preaching, people laughed at me. I am the most laughed at pastor. <laughs> yeah, people didn't think I, I could. You know, in my country, when you are fair like this, you are seen as a foreigner. Everywhere I'm seen as a foreigner. Here too, I'm seen as a foreigner. My accent is I'm not really from here. There, I'm also seen as a foreigner. Everywhere, I, you are a foreigner. So I, I belong where? I belong to God. <laughs> yeah. When I started a church, people mock her. I invited one pastor. I said, will you please come to our church? We started a little church in a classroom. We want you to come. He said, I don't sow among thorns. This was his response. I don't sow among thorns. Wow. I don't sow among thorns. I, he said, I've stopped sowing among thorns. <laughs> yeah. One pastor, he laughed at me. He said, one guy, he laughed at me. He said, in fact, he left, he left the church. He said, you don't have, you don't have miracles. You don't have power. You are just an administrator, a teacher and an administrator. How? <laughs> yeah. No, I've heard, I've heard a lot of nasty things. One guy, he couldn't control himself. He came to our church. When he saw the church, he just burst out and said, why dark? Why dark? It's like, why? He, 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 before he could control his mouth, he said, why? Why is God using dark? He, he, he never expected God to use me. don't sow among thorns. Yeah. One day I sent somebody to in introduce my book to a pastor. He looked at the book. Loyalty. He said, 
Loyalty. This is not something you teach. These are not things you teach. These are things you command by your lifestyle. It's not necessary. I went to preach in the church. When I finished preaching, the assistant pastor came to the whatever, and he told the, he told the senior pastor, this is... But when he met me, he shook my hand and smiled. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> I wrote a book for them. It's called Those Who Pretend. Where, where is it? Yeah. Those, those Who Pretend. I have a book for them. Yeah. <laughs> he said, loyalty? When I preach about myself, why is he preaching about loyalty? Who told him we are quarreling in this church? Then he threw the book to the ground. And he stamped on it. He wanted the book to go. <clears throat> he said, this is not a book. A professor. A professor. Jesus Christ. But it, it keeps being more popular. And people keep reading it. And people keep inviting me all over. Yeah. All over. I can't go. I can't go. I can't go. Wow. What you need is the anointing. So I want to encourage you, you know, because when this conference is over, it's going to be up to you to catch the anointing. Now, there's a verse I want to share with you because it's used a lot by prosperity preachers. Like myself, I believe in prosperity. Amen. <laughs> Second Chronicles 2020. You know it. You know it. What does it say? Believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe in his prophets. And you will what? Prosper. This is a popular prosperity scripture. So this, bo this book explains that scripture. Now, the reason why it explains that scripture is that if you check on your iPad, if you use an iPad, or you use a whatever... You should all start using iPads. A lot of pastors don't use iPads here. Why don't you use iPads? Receive it in Jesus' name. Whatever keeps you from having an iPad, today it is taken away in Jesus' name. When you see that the Second Chronicles 2020, believe in the Lord your God, you shall, you shall be established. The word established is the word aman. When you use the iPad, you just tap it. You just tap the word uh, established. You got it right there. When you just tap it, it shows you. It comes up. Where did you tap? You just tap. Believe in the Lord and so you shall you be established. It just tap, tap it and the meaning comes there in Hebrew. It just appears. So the Hebrew word is aman. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall aman. Then when you come to prosper, believe in the Lord your God, you shall prosper. You press prosper. And the word comes, chalak. With the real meanings. And the different meanings of that word. Okay? Or you can use your strong concordance if you have a concordance. Now, when you check the meaning, and I checked this one when there was no iPad invented at that time. When you check the meaning of the word aman, believe in the Lord your God, you shall aman. It means you'll be nurtured. You will be fostered. You'll be fostered. Nurtured. Brought up. Nest. That comes by believing in God. And all Christians need a man. You need to believe in God, the word. Never change your belief in the word of God. Strong in the word of God. Always knowing God and God's word. You are fostered and nurtured and nursed into becoming a solid Christian. It's very important. That's a man. So believe in, the, and one of the word is established. So believe in the Lord your God. You'll be nurtured, nursed, fostered, established, solid. Then he goes and said, believe in his prophets and you shall chalak. Now, chalak means, what does it mean? 
It means to go mightily. It means to break out. You see, in ministry, if you are going to break out and come mightily, one of the meanings is to come mightily. It means to, to be good. To be good. To be profitable. To be profitable. To break out. To break out. To go over. How many want to break out and go over? Yes. To break out and to go over. And what else? To be effective. To be effective. To be profitable. To be prof. You see, to go mightily, come mightily, to go for, break out, you need to believe in a person. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, believe in God, believe also in me. And you see, there is nobody who breaks out in ministry until he has also a person that he is believing. Like as you see, I'm talking, I mentioned Kenneth Hagin. And I, mention, I can mention more if I keep talking, you'll hear more names. The more, I, the more I speak, you'll hear more names. But some of you, you have nobody you ever mention. Nobody is your father. You are, there's no, there is no one you are, I mean, you are, God spoke to you yourself. God, God spoke to me in the night. Watch out for these God spoke to me people. God said, God said, God spoke to me, God spoke. Look, if it was as easy as that, God speak, just, you go in the morning, God said, God said, then come in the evening, God said, God. One day I had a young man like that in, in our school, and he, every time he said, you know, God told me to be here for, for now. I said, God told you to be here for now. He said, yeah, God told me I should stay. I said, can you imagine if I tell you every day, God told me to accept you for, for, for this week. God told me to accept you in this school for, for, for the next one month. I'll see what God says next week. Watch out for these people. God said to me, they can easily come and tell you, God told me not to marry you anymore. God told me that I married you, I married you, it was a mistake. God told me that uh, I married you in the night, like Jacob. I married in the night, I couldn't see my wife. So, I made a mistake. Watch out for these kind of people, very dangerous. Believe in God and believe in his prophets. When you learn how to believe in God's servant whom God has sent to you, then you start to come mightily. You see, I, look, I grew up in Scripture Union. Do you have Scripture Union in South Africa? Scripture Union ministry in schools. That, that was my foundation. Bible, my games I used to play was quoting verses. I will quote until you quote. When I can out quote you, then I've won. So we, we quote Genesis 1 1. Okay, Psalm 23, Psalm 90, this, this one, that. Second Timothy, you, then it's your turn. It's my turn. It's your turn. My turn. Until I quote and you are not able to quote, then I've won. These were my games. I was solidly founded in scriptures. Then, but you see, it doesn't make you come mightily, it doesn't make you break out in ministry, it makes you solidly established and nurtured. So believe in God, you will be solid and you will be nurtured and established. But you need to have the man whom you also believe in. Even Jesus Christ, he had John the Baptist. Yes. When they asked him, where do you get this thing from? He said, if you tell me whether John the Baptist was good or not, I'll tell you. Jesus went to John the Baptist ministry. He knelt down, he submitted, became humble. And when he was asked, any comment about John the Baptist? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we are from uh, Daily Express. Do you have any uh, comment about uh, uh, John the Baptist? He said, he's the greatest. You see, when, when, you, when, you re when, you meet your, when you meet your chalak, he will be the greatest to you. Yeah. He said, there is no one among men. <laughs> People that were born by a woman, there's nobody greater than John the Baptist. I was also born by a woman. There's no one greater than John. Yeah. And that's how I see Kenneth Hagin that way. I can't find any greater. To, and that great, when the person is great to you, you are able to receive from the person. I mean, it just drops on you naturally. Like you just, there's no question of criticism. You cannot receive from somebody you criticize. When 
you grow to stop thinking of the negative stories and things, look, you will learn to, you, your heart will open. One day I went somewhere, a, a man had written a book about Kenneth Hagin. I mean, a whole book. The man whom I admire, he had written a book with quotations from the beginning to the end. A thick book. He used it as his thesis in Oral Roberts University. Yeah. And he said, I want to give you one. I heard you mention Kenneth Hagin. I want to give you one of these books. So I took the book. When I opened it, I immediately saw that they were trying to criticize him. But before I closed the book finally, I saw something. And it became one of my greatest revelations about Kenneth Hagin. It, it, the book rather turned out to be um, something that was showing me great things about him. Because my mind is tuned to receive great things from him, not to listen to stories. South Africa, do you criticize pastors? Hopefully tomorrow, I hear we're having a conference again tomorrow, we can have a chance to talk about the loyalty things. Yeah. All of you, bring your members and your associates and all those grumbling people, bring them tomorrow. They, a medicine is going to kill all those things out of them. In Jesus' name. Are you here or you're going home? Yeah. Yeah. Aman and Chalak. Everybody say Aman. Aman. Chalak. Chalak. Believe in the Lord your God. You shall Aman. Aman. Believe in his prophets. In his prophets. You, will you will Chalak. Yes. That's a Hebrew word, Chalak. Yeah. It means you break out. Can't you see I'm breaking out? Because I believe personally in Reinhard Bonke. Yes. It's not a vague belief. It's not a vague belief. Oh, you got to be careful about believing a man, and you know you have to be careful. You know, he's just a man, and you know. <laughs> Where is my book? The art of following. Yeah. I believe in the art of following. Christians should believe in the art of following because. That is what Jesus Christ taught us. He taught us how to follow. Amen. 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 He taught us that the greatest way to teach is to follow. Make somebody follow. So Jesus would say to people, follow me. I will make you. If Jesus Christ was so, was God, the son of God, and he was about to teach human beings, would he choose an inferior way to teach? He must have chosen the highest way of teaching. The best way. Follow me, I'll make you. Follow. Be you followers of God. Follow, follow, follow. So when you check the word follow, it means to copy, to imitate to emulate. And you find out that people who have prospered have been master copycats. To do well in God, you must learn to be a copycat, a follower. Amen. I am, one of my aims is to be a good copycat. Yes, following. You know, I once bought a book, Why Rich Countries Are Rich and Why Poor Countries Remain Poor. So I, I saw it at the airport and I just bought it and took it on the flight. And I, I opened first chapter, Why Rich Countries Are Rich. Why? How many can guess what the chapter one is? Why Rich Countries Are Rich? Emulation, copying. He said, every rich country copies the other one. Yeah. Copying has made people rich. All the old countries we know, they copy the other neighbor. Yeah. 
you can have a great thing next to you, but if you don't copy it, <laughs> you'll be in darkness. Yeah. So Switzerland copied Germany. Germany copied France. France copied Belgium. Look, have you ever seen any car they make? Once I say you've put power windows, I also make power windows. I will not allow you to have power window without me having power windows. It's not possible. You put a CD player, I'll have a CD player. You put air condition, mine is going to have air conditions as well. That's the richest, old rich countries. America. When America was founded by England, they said, you have farms. England will have the industries. They said, no. <laughs> we, should, we should be farmers. We should make oranges and uh, tomatoes, granites, you be making iPads and phones and selling. All countries which are poor specialize in farming. All, all rich countries, yes, all poor countries specialize in farm oranges, tomatoes, I mean mangoes, others, and all poor countries, all rich, all poor countries specialize in those. All rich countries make iPhones, iPads, Samsung phones, cars. It's the same. Just copy. How can you be as rich as America when you are specialized in making rubber? Rubber trees. Like Liberia. Or cocoa like Ghana. How can you ever be as rich as America? They are selling iPads and iPhones. Land cruisers. Cars. Copying. Okay, let's look at the countries which recently became rich. Korea. What did they do? Copy. Go to Korea and see. Hey, if you want to see copycat, Korea is, maybe that's why it starts with K. K for copy. <laughs> and China. C for Chinese. Copy. They took Hyundai and they copied Toyota. They took Daewoo. They copied Opel. I bought one. My mother bought one. Opel. Same car, Opel Cadet. When I opened the engine, it was um, Opel engine. Because they had not learned how to make the engine. They could copy only the, part, the body. That was easier. Just welding. That's just welding. So they, were, they could make the body. Sangyong, they copied Mercedes Benz. I bought one. Inside is Mercedes Benz engine. Outside is they could make the body. Now they've done the engine. And they've caught up. Now almost every car is a Kia, Hyundai. They are more popular than even the Japanese cars. The people they copied. 100% copying. The key to catching up in the ministry. The key to surging forward in the ministry is learning how to copy and follow. That is the key that children use that makes them learn languages fast. They catch up quick. You will be speaking Korean and they come as a child and they also start straight. It works. But you are grown up because of your pride. You cannot easily learn a language. You, you, you can, because you can't copy. Every time you copy, if somebody laughs at you, you, you keep quiet. When I'm on stage and I try to copy the language, everybody laughs. You will soon not try to copy. Because they will laugh at you. Hey. Yeah. If I put you when you were six years, six years old in Saudi Arabia, you, when I see you, say, straight away. But, <laughs> but if I put you there now, you will be looking like a deaf and dumb, like a statue. You'll be looking at them. You cannot say anything. But when you are humble, when you are humble, you don't mind being laughed at. You will learn the art of following. This, this book is called The Art of Following. Somebody was asking, what's your master key? When I started Crusades, I said, ah, who knows me are doing crusades? Who is going to come to my crusade? And I said, who is ahead of me? 
who is there? Who, I want to identify anybody who is there. And I could see only one person, Reinhard Bonke. So I said, okay, I will copy this man. Hey! Even when I say, hey, I like, he says, hey. So I said, hey. Because I don't know why he's saying it. Maybe there's a mystery in that word. Hey! <laughs> it's true. Yeah. People are too proud to learn. They are too big to learn. Yeah. To copy, to learn. When somebody is doing church and the church is working, I went to Korea. I said, who has got a big church? Korea. I said, let's go to Korea. I take people to Korea all the time. Let's go. Let's travel. One day, recently, I took about uh, 50 or 100 people to Korea. When they got there, we went around the churches, the offices. Finally, we had a meeting. We were all together by the riverside. And the people would say, Bishop, it seems these people have copied most of the things you've been doing in Ghana. And I said, you are now seeing where I copied all these things from. You are now seeing where I copied everything from. I came here in 1994. I came to copy in 95. I started copying. And the people thought that they had copied. They had learned. I learned from them. But you see, when you copy very well, people don't know the source of your things. Yeah. They, 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 it looks, when you copy very well, it looks original. This is God's method of training us and making us great. He said, each one will produce after his own kind. You, you produce another of the same kind. Yes. Alos, another of the same kind. It's God's way of reproducing. So, whatever ministry God has given me, there are going to be some people that we call in the Greek word, alos, another of the same kind. Heteros is another of a different kind. Alos, another of the same kind. Yes. Another of what? The same kind. Say it again. Another of? Say it together. Another of the same kind. Another of the same kind. Another of the same kind. Yes. And God wants to do this crusade. God would like another of the same kind. Not by a Ghanaian, a South African. Yes, South African. Miracles, healing, preaching, teaching the word of God. Another of the same kind. Kenneth Hagin was having books. When he died, he had produced 65 million books. And I'm, I'm, I'm at 12 million. 11 to 12 million books. I'm on my way to being another of the same kind. And mostly pastors like my books. And leaders. That's how his books were too. His books were not about funny topics. Yeah. God is making you into another of the same kind. And the art is the art of copying. Read this book and you will see the Bible basis for copying. Don't listen to these American things you hear. You are, you are an, you know, you're an, you're an original, you know. You know, you're original, man. You, you, God, God made you an original. Glory to God. You don't need to copy nobody. You're an original. Original of what? Original of what? I, I don't understand you, what you are an original of. Ecclesiastes says there is nothing under the sun that is new. Is there, is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? No, it has already been of old. There is nobody here who is coming with anything new. Glory to God. You don't need to copy nobody. Imitation is limitation. Glory to God. glad. I am glad to be a copy. In fact, one of my greatest 
um, comments, the comments that I like when I, when I hear them. When somebody says, oh, you remind me of uh, this, then I secretly say, yeah, 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 yeah. It's working. It's working. Yeah. You remind me of uh, this man. He said, ah, you are a son of this. I said, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's working. But you are original, isn't it? You, you are original. Congratulate your neighbor. I hear you are an original from, from space. You just came from Mars. An original, whatever. You just arrived. You are coming. Wow. I learned how to preach by copying Fred Price. Fred Price from America. Yeah, that's why I walk around, you know. I, I've never, I can never stand. I, Yongi Cho stands still, but I learned how to preach before I met Yongi Cho. So, and the person I copied preaching walks around all the time. I, I just can't stand still. Yeah. I just can't stand still. Because the person I'm copying, he, he walks around, he talks to people like I'm talking to you. If you watch him, you see. Yeah. Hey. So I'm a mixture of copies. I'm a mixture. That's why it's not easy to place me. <laughs> but you are, you are original, isn't it? And where, how far is your originality taking you? How, how far are you going being an original? What, what are you accomplishing for God? You are getting older. You are getting to the place you die. And you still haven't accomplished much. By being an original, it's time to rise up and just start. Look, I love these two words, surging, catching up, and surging forward. Say it after me, surging forward and catching up. Surging forward and catching up. Say it again, surging forward and catching up. That is what you need to do. You need to surge forward. And surging forward, catching up. <laughs> you know, some of our staff, singers, we had some diff diff different issues. So we had to bring different people on. And I, as I look at them, I say, wow, this one is surging forward and catching up. I just whisper, look at her. Just copying. Copying. Surging forward. Catching up. That's how come I'm standing here today. Yeah. You are looking at somebody who has never been chosen by anyone. Yeah. When I was in school, I was never chosen to be a class prefect. Or even the one who wipes the uh, blackboard, uh, blackboard <laughs> monitor. No one ever liked me much. Yeah. Even when I joined the Christian fellowships, no one ever chose me. One time I was, I was in the school and uh, they chose the executives, seven of them. And they realized that it was quite odd that I wasn't chosen. So they created a new post for me. Prayer Secretary of the West. But when God chooses you, when God chooses you, and when you learn these keys, the key of following, the key of finding a horse, a cow in front of you, the key of following, then you will see that even though nobody will choose you and say, you, you, I choose you for awards. I choose you this. You are great. You are this. Nobody. Ever. God will choose you. Yeah. God will choose you. To me, it's a great honor to be here. I see the anointing working. That I'm standing in Clegg's. I've never heard of this town before. I don't even know where I'm going next. I just say, where, where is the next town? What is it called? Okay, it's called Clegg's. Let's go. I don't know where. They, they just plan it. And we go. Right now as I speak, my team is driving through Madagascar. 
They sent me pictures of rivers. They cannot cross. There are no roads to town, to places. There are souls hidden behind. No one cares about them. That's why the word island is in my heart. It's an island. They are isolated. Very poor. The car they are using was what I was using in 1987. Yeah. But when the spirit is of the Lord is on you, you will be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Stand to your feet, everybody, for a moment. Hallelujah. How many sense that God is taking you out of your island? Now, how many of you realize you were on an island? Oh, yes. All of us are on, on, on islands. But God is doing something wonderful. When we close, we are not closing here. Please don't walk out. I told you, do not walk out. But when you walk out, you stare up the ending of the service before it has ended. You cause people that you are walking by to open their eyes and to say, oh, why? We're going. Then they pick their bag. Let's go. This is what happens. So please, have that little respect. We have not yet closed. Dr. Go is going to come up and say a few things before we end. We're continuing tomorrow. But this is available. The Macane, what is it called? The Macarius Library. 40 books. All these available. And instead of costing $250, which is what it was sold for in Soweto, uh, it is, that's 4,000 rands. It's being sold for 900 rands. And it comes with a free, free one of this, which costs $100. So this actually costs about 6,000 rands and it's being given to you. We can afford to give it free. We have so much in our track. We, we, don't, we don't need you to buy it. Or we don't need money. But because it, you've, only those who value it buy it. How many value the key of knowledge? And This is a great blessing to you. So make sure you get I hope it, it, it will not run out. I don't believe it will run out. But get your copy and it's going to be a great blessing to you. Lift your hand and just thank God for his mighty works that you are about to start embarking on in your life before you die it will be said of you that you have done mighty work before you die before you finish yes mighty works mighty 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 works thanks Jesus thanks a million thanks for your power thanks for your grace Thanks for your love. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes. Mighty, 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 mighty. Jigale Brasanada. Mighty works. Mighty works. Mighty works. Mighty works. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Thanks, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Oh, yes. For it shall come to pass that I will raise up mighty trees to bear mighty fruits and do great works who are these trees they are the trees whose roots have sunk deep deep down to where the fresh waters are they shall drink deep 
of the deep waters, the deep rivers of my knowledge and my wisdom. Receive unto yourself now the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of light. Arise and shine for your light is come. Receive rivers of revelation and knowledge. Hey, in the knowledge of Christ, in the knowledge of his work and the knowledge of his ministry. The spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, attributing it to the Lord. Receive it now. And walk on, my son. Walk on, my son. For I have called you to many, many things. Not these little things. Uh, for, for I have many great things. Greater things. Uh, that shall be accomplished only not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, by the mighty spirit of God. For without me you can do nothing. Therefore humble yourself. Come to me like a soldier ready to learn. Come to me like a warrior ready to learn, ready to understand uh, the ways of war, the ways of battle, the ways of doing kingdom business. Come to me, my son, and I will show you great things mighty things that have never entered your mind or your heart for the spirit of light shall fall upon you and you shall hear a voice behind you saying arise 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 arise, arise and shine shine on my servant shine on my servant shine on my servant for the glory of the lord is risen upon you. Do not take these days lightly. Do not take these words lightly. For my spirit is come unto you with light, uh, revelation, wisdom, understanding. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus. The angel of the Lord is here. The angel of the Lord is here. For where the revelation is, the angel of the Lord is right there. Speaking to the churches, speaking to the pastors, speaking to the leaders. Receive the ministry of the angel of the Lord. Open your heart to the ministry of the angel of the Lord. As he speaks to the churches, and as he speaks to the different ones, and walk on in this new river that I have given to you. For I have seen, I have seen, I have seen, some are up to their ankle. Some are, some are up to the ankle. No, says the Spirit, many are up to their ankles only. Have not known the depths of my spirit. Have not even come up to knee level and to waist level. And have never even swam, swam in the glory, swam in the anointing, swam in the oil, swam in the waters, the waters of the Spirit. Now you flitano suante namo pradalia. Dive now, dive my servant, dive. Running, dive into the deep end. Dive into the waters of the Spirit. I will bless you as you dive into the waters, the mighty waters of the mighty Spirit of the Lord. Thanks, Jesus. Come back to the Spirit. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. I hear him say, go on, go on, go on, in, 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 in there. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Go on in, my servant. Go on in. Go in deeper. Don't be restricted. Don't be limited. For I shall cause you to do a great work and a mighty work. For many here are young and are young enough to receive this word. Many here, it is not past your expiry date. It's not past your expiry date. It's not past your expiry date. Ah, flate lumale, tumla implale, ni prele prusina, dintele mosfolole, neli kruma lanase. For you are not an old tree that cannot be taught. You are not an old tree that cannot be bent. Yeah, 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 your time. Your time is not over. Your time is not up. You have time. You have time. You have time. Therefore, arise. Arise and shine. Light. Light. Light has come. Light has come. Shine. Light has come. Shine. Light has come. Shine. Light has come. Shine. Light. 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 
light shine, shine, shine. Thanks, 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 thanks. What a wonderful Savior. Thank you, Lord. We're going on in. We're going on in. We're going on in. In the spirit. Thanks so much for the wonderfulness of your presence. Guide us. Now, my servants, listen. For those who stand here as my servants, hear this, hear him. For I have placed before you light. I have placed before you 
a cow, a sheep. This is the way to go. For you shall hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way of God. Go. As you have heard my spirit speak to you, you can recognize my voice. Therefore, follow my voice. For you shall receive for yourself glory and honor when you receive such a voice coming to you from the excellent Lord. Now, my servants, hear ye the word of the Lord. You shall not remain on this island forever. I take you further and I take you higher. You are going to the high places and the waters of the Spirit. You shall swim in them, says the Spirit of the Lord. God bless you. Keep clapping your hands. Keep clapping your hands. Let's appreciate the gift of God. Evangelist Doug, we say God bless you. We are grateful for such a time of impartation, of direction. Please, let's clap our hands unto the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Are we pastors? Are we church workers? Then let's appreciate the gift of God. This is it. Hallelujah. And I believe it. I believe that as we've sat at the feet of God's servant, with humility, of course, there is going to be a transfer of anointings and graces. Yes. All of us are pastors. We must be doing something already. All of us. But God is taking us to another dimension of the same ministry. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and I, I will never forget the word island. I've never heard this before. That we are on islands. Yes. I am on an island. And by the grace of God, the next time people find you, you will not be on the island you were on before. Yeah. We are breaking out. We are breaking forth. And the key, the, you see, the key, the key has been put into our hands. The key is the key of chalak. Chalak. That is believing in a man. Yes. Believing in a man. And I tell you that you are not the only one who knows the key of chalak. Satan also knows the key of chalak. Yes. So one of the things he does is that before the right person comes, he just shuffles the cards and puts a wrong image in front of you to follow. But by the grace of God, we are seeing through and we are seeing beyond his tricks. And we are following the right cow in front of us. Amen. All of us can, can move beyond where we are. And I want to say, the books which have come to us this week, these books, this 900 rand pack, blessing for your life, and the other, other products, these ones, this, these are USBs containing hours, many hours of teachings. This is the evangelist. You will learn how to preach at a crusade. You will learn how to do evangelism as a pastor. As you listen. And God will bless you. This is the charisma. Teachings on the anointing. Teachings on the anointing. And many others which we have been introduced to us. I, I, I really believe that we must not walk out of this conference with nothing in our hands. It will be a mistake. Yes. And we in Clairstop are really blessed to have this conference for two days. Yes. The past, how many conferences we've had have all been one day, one day? Yes. I, I, I don't remember the last time we had two days. But you are having it for two days. Yes. There must be a reason. Amen. And uh, I want you to get ready and 
prepare to, to acquire the materials for your life. Because it is eventually the knowledge you have access to that defines who you are. Yeah. It should not be about your height, whether you are tall or short, whether you are a Nigerian or, a, or, a, or, or an American. At the end of the day, it is the anointing, the keys you have that will open the doors in the ministry for you. So let's clap our hands for Jesus. And, you know, you may please be seated.